So we just did uh, x squared plus 5x plus 6 is equal to 0, right? Let's do, let's change, just change it up just slightly a little bit, a little bit, and see what happens with our results. Now we've got x squared minus 5x plus 6 is equal to 0. All I did was change the plus sign to a minus sign for this problem. When you're solving this, all you do is you go bracket, 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 bracket is equal to 0. You're looking for two numbers that multiply to give you 6, add to give you negative 5. Negative 2 times negative 6, and negative 2 times negative 3 gives you positive 6. Negative 2 plus negative 3 gives you negative 5. So those are your numbers. And for this guy, all you do is you break this x squared in here. So you're going to break this into even parts in here. If this was x to the power of 4, all you would do, you put x squared here and x squared here. But that's x squared, so all you're doing is you're going x and x. And what, what we figured out this to be is negative 2 times negative 3. Okay. And then what you would do is just set each one of these equal to 0. So x minus 2 is equal to 0. x minus 3 is equal to 0. Right? And this one is just x is equal to and x is equal to 3. Right? Now, if you want to go from here back to here, all you would do is something called FOIL, which is, I, you know, I don't like the term, I don't use the term very much, which is, you know, the first two numbers multiplied together, FOIL. The outside numbers multiplied together, the inside numbers multiplied together, and the last numbers multiplied together. That's FOIL, F-O-I-L, right? What I do is just do it visually. This multiplies this, multiplies this, this multiplies this, this multiplies this. Now, to go back from here to there, this is what you do. And if you end up doing this, you're going to go x times x is going to be x squared. x times negative 3 is going to be negative 3x. Negative 2 times x is going to be negative 2x. And negative 2 times negative 3 is going to be 6. Now, negative 3x plus negative 2x is going to give you negative 5x. I think we've covered this before, it's just straightforward, you know, straightforward foiling or expanding this. And that will take you back to this. Let's do a couple more questions. So what I did here was just change it up just slightly, right? Change the sign and drop the 5. Change the sign for the 6 and drop the 5 here. So again, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to go bracket, bracket. And you're going to ask yourself, what are two numbers that multiply to give you negative 6 and add to give you, if there is no number here, is a 1. So they add to give you negative 1. Okay. Again, we're dealing with uh, 2 and 3, but they have to multiply to give you negative 6. It's going to be negative 3 and positive 2. So it's going to work out. And this is, so it's going to be negative 3 and positive 2. Now, if you do the little table, these are the only combinations that are going to give you, multiply to give you negative 6. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. Negative 3 plus 2 is going to give you negative 1. Okay. So if you do your table, if you know your multiplication, you know, this stuff should come fairly easy. If you don't know your multiplication table, then, you know, it's going to take a little bit of effort to do this, to get to this. And in general, it takes up, you know, initially this, this is a little bit hard for people to figure out what the two numbers are. And I'm using really simple numbers here. Uh, later on, we might do some problems with more complicated numbers. But the, the better you know your multiplication table, the easier this stuff will be. So, you know, learn your multiplication table because the numbers, you know, are, you know, the numbers in general you're going to get are going to be a little bit more complicated than just 6 and 1. Over here, what you're going to do is, what goes here and here is going to be x squared. It's the square root of whatever is here. Square root of x to the power of 4 is just going to be x squared. x squared, okay? So what you do, again, you got two things multiplied to give you 0. So what you do, you set each one equal to 0. So this is going to be x squared minus 3 is equal to 0, and x squared plus 2 is equal to 0. Okay. And from here, all you do, you solve for these. And we know how to solve for these. You grab the 3, bring it over. So this becomes x squared is equal to positive 3. Over here, you grab the 2, bring it over. So that's x squared is equal to negative 2. Right? Now, 
To get the x by itself, you have to take the square root of both sides. So you take the square root from this side, you take the square root from this side, square root, square root. Now, over here, we have no answer because we're taking the square root of a negative number, right? So this one doesn't give us any solutions. This branch of the answer, right? So no solutions here. Over here, square root of x squared is just x. Square root of 3 is this thing is going to give you two solutions. It's going to be positive square root 3 and negative square root 3. So the answer for this guy is going to be, let's do this. We're going to write this. This guy is just going to be x is equal to plus or minus square root of 3. Okay, And that's the solution to this because this branch didn't give us any solutions. It's the square root of a negative number. And again, this thing does have answers. They're called complex numbers uh, or imaginary numbers, but we're not dealing with these right now. We will later on hopefully get into them much, much later uh, in, you know, hopefully in a couple of years maybe. So let's do a problem where we're doing a combination of GCF and simple trinomial factoring, which is what we've been doing for the last three or four problems, right? This thing, now we have a problem with because we can't factor this. Simple trinomial factoring is not going to work because we don't have, you know, x for simple trinomial factoring, we need this to be, we need this power to be half power of this guy. So this thing's not going to work. So again, what we're going to try to do is take out a GCF from this. And again, this is going to be for every type of problem, every type of equation you get, you're always going to look for a GCF. So first thing we're going to do when we're trying to solve this problem, we're going to take out the GCF, and once we take out the GCF, we're going to have a simple trinomial, and we can factor that right away, okay? So again, whenever you're encountering, you know, problems, you know, solving any type of equation, the first thing you should be looking for is a GCF. And from this, we do have a GCF. We have 3, 3, and 18. So we can take out a 3 from all three terms. And we have an x to the power of 5 times q and an x. So we can take out an x, minimum, the smallest factor from, or the smallest, uh, uh, the, yeah, the smallest factor from all three of them, right? The weakest link in the chain we can take out. So what we have here is, we're going to end up having 3x coming out. And what we have left here is, is going to be x to the power of 4 minus, we've got 3x coming out, so we just need an x squared here, minus, we took a 3 out of 18, so there's going to be a 6 left. And we already took out the x, so we don't need anything. We don't need an x there, so that's going to be like this. All right. And this guy is the same problem we had as the last one. So we already know what the answer to this question is. We just happen to have an extra solution here. So we have two things multiplied together to give us zero. So what we're going to end up doing is setting each one of these things equal to zero, right? So this guy's going to be 3x is equal to zero. This guy's going to be x to the power of 4 minus x squared minus 6 is equal to zero. And we already solved for that one. We already know what the answer to this one is. I'm not going to bother solving for it. This one is going to give us the solution is x is equal to plus and minus square root of 3. We get two solutions out of that one. And for this one, you just divide by 3, so it's just x is equal to 0. And this question here is given us, or this question here has given us three solutions. x is equal to 0, x is equal to positive square root 3, x is equal to negative square root 3. And those, again, are your x-intercepts for, now this is no longer a quadratic equation, this is an equation to the power of 5, right? Or a function to the power of 5. So that means it has five different curves in it. And again, we'll get into analyzing these functions much later uh, when, we're, when we're doing functions, okay? But right now, all we're concerned with is solving for them because it's one of the main things that we do when we have equations, right? We solve for equations, which basically means finding the x-intercepts.